Welcome to Future Role Model episode 17 with Justin Harrison. This podcast is a podcast that redefines the conventional and makes it okay to be a fuck up. Um, <laughs> Justin Harrison, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, fuck up is the right way to intro me. I, I know. Mean, especially today. You're, so. you're a perfect amount of fuck up. Justin and I have a really special relationship because... I was still an open mic comic when I met you. So was I. Yeah, yeah. we were both. We were both we, lowly. We, I think we feel like we started like the same month. Yeah, it was really close in proximity to each other. For people that uh, don't know a little bit about my story, but I started in Chicago, and I, you know, when you're a new comic, you kind of have bigger balls than you deserve to have. So I was coming out to San Francisco for the first time, and I hadn't, I didn't know anybody, nor did I really deserve oh, yeah, to be yeah. hitting up. I shouldn't have been hitting up clubs at all because Zero I was given. way too fucking new. Um, but I messaged Justin out of nowhere and was like, "Hey, I really want to do a spot. Uh, you got any time for me?" And he totally, he totally hooked me up, which was awesome because you didn't know me or owe me anything. That but was like eight years ago. I think it was longer than that. Like a nine, maybe yeah. nine. Because I moved. I mean, we both. We did, so here's the thing about us, right? Like our our careers have like. Sorry, I'm gonna post this Instagram story. <laughs> I'm such a like I'm a teen, like I'm a teenage girl basically. Justin just got back from a bender in Vegas. See, we've been outside talking oh, for like so ten bad. minutes before we started this podcast, and um. Justin was like, this is a perfect time for me to talk about not being a role model because I just went on a bender in Vegas. And I was like, good for you, man. Good for you. I should have been in Vegas this week, too. But uh, no, I no, was too cool. <laughs> no. First of all, it's like 110 degrees every day. Yeah. So, I mean, I think the other fun thing about you and I is we're like drinking buddies, too. Yeah. We've gone really, really hard together. Before. Yeah. So, like, MPH and I, 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 <laughs> I feel like you and I have like, I don't know that we've, this may be the first time we've hung out sober. I think it is. <laughs> I don't know that I've, A, don't know that I've ever seen you in daylight hours. He doesn't know what my face actually looks like. <laughs> <laughs> there was a time we got so hammered. I think we lived in LA for like a week. Yeah. He just moved. He had just moved from San Francisco. I had just moved from Chicago. Do you remember this night? I think so. Was that the night you had to drive my scooter yeah. home? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> this is one of my favorite. Moments. I totally forgot that was a thing until this just now. This is one now. of my favorite like moments ever. Okay, so just <laughs> when I moved to Los Angeles, it's it's always so shitty for everybody when you move to Los Angeles, even if you have some foundation to start to step on, because this city is so crazy and nobody gives a shit really about you when you're new. They're not like, oh, let me help you out. I mean, that, to an extent, like I had some people that were definitely helping me out in certain ways. Sure, sure. But I didn't have my ducks in a row. Like I didn't, I didn't have my like, uh, I didn't have enough money saved by any means, and I didn't, I did not know about needing a car. So I was super stranded in Burbank, like a ton where I first lived, and I bought this Jaguar. It was a two thousand and one, I think, Jaguar, the old school one with the Jaguar actually yeah, on the front yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. It was mint green. It was like a pimp's car, and uh, and uh, it had broken down within three weeks of me buying it. Shocker. So. I worked at this beer bar at the time and this girl I worked with was like, I've got a scooter. Like, you just want to use my scooter for a while? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, yeah, I really want to use your scooter. And so... <laughs> I, just, I just want to clarify for the audience. This was the dumbest scooter ever. It was like 800 years. It was for sure older than Natasha, 100%. <laughs> So old, such a piece of shit. And it was like 100 cc's. I, I don't even think it was like that. So I don't even tiny, think it had that much 50, going on. Maybe, maybe. And, uh, I had already almost gotten a hit on it so many times, like taking intersections. It didn't take intersections very well. And so we'd been out for I don't for even few... know what that term means. No. Take an intersection? It, like, you mean make a turn? Is that the turn. word you're looking for? Yeah, maybe. It I didn't could, take intersections. It, could, it couldn't handle the, the road. Wait, were you doing something pretty crazy on it? Uh, yeah, I was moving it. <laughs> I was trying to I was using it for them. its purpose. <laughs> So we were at like fucking wild, man. Where were we at? We were at um, that place that does karaoke, porn star karaoke, right? Ah, oh, what is that place called? They did comedy for a long time. I did a set there years. Yeah, ago. Sar Sardinos, something like that. Sar Sardos. Sardos, Sardos. And we Brian were Monarch started there, right? Yeah, Brian Monarch used to have a show there. Yeah, and he used to have a show at the pizza place too, that um, in Van Nuys or something. God, yeah, and is, the, like Jimmy and Joey, there was two guys that had it at a pizza place. In yeah, oh, the it's just bringing back so many memories. Like the first places I performed when I was in LA. And so there was one night we were drinking at this uh, open mic 
And I was like, there's no fucking way I can drive this scooter after having a couple drinks. And he was like, let me drive the scooter and you can take my car and follow me. And we had to go into Hollywood. Genius planning by our parts. So we're taking um, the the sides, like the frontage road next to the 101 freeway. No, no, no. We're on Barham. Oh, shit. We were on Barham. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And you were like bumping along at like 25 okay, miles so, an hour. So <laughs> Nat- Natasha's also also one of the sweetest people I know, but I used to weigh about 100 pounds more at that time <laughs> in my life. So like imagine a 300 pound dude on a on a fucking lawnmower with we- with like t- kind of tires. <laughs> That, so has tr- funny. that has trouble that taking so funny. intersections. I'm doing maybe 20 miles an hour. Ma- like that's a that's a stretch. <laughs> Natasha is riding my ass in my fucking Jeep. I have a giant Jeep 4x4. <laughs> and we're just, it's two in the morning. We're both s- smashed, horrendously irresponsible decisions. Uh-huh. And we're crawling. I, how did we not get arrested? I don't night? know because we were barely driving. It was like the most suspicious. If if people <laughs> didn't think we were up to something drinking wise, they definitely thought we were going to rob something because we were driving so slow. It looked like we were casing everywhere. That is <laughs> that is Los Angeles. The cops are so busy here. Even that doesn't get you pulled over <laughs> in Hollywood. Just the visual of that. Remembering just now what it was like to follow you on that because it's a pretty bumpy road and we'd hit like this bump and he would just like fly <laughs> up. Do you, you remember in the Guinness Book of World Records when we were little kids <laughs> and like they have the fattest twins in the world and it's two fat twins <laughs> on us on those like little mini scooter bikes oh that's God. what I imagine it looked like a little bit I can't stop laughing it's so funny I was, a, I was a real big boy I'm still a big boy but I was massive at that time oh my god just, well you look good now but I mean it's hammered oh god so memories so irresponsible yeah so I mean we literally did rage together so much back in the day and I think we're due for a session we haven't done that in a while I gotta like I'm in I, for sure, 100%, but I'm in the, I'm in that 110 degree heat in Vegas, Mm -hmm. just going insane with comics. And then you, because it's Vegas, every time's the same time. Right. There's no, it's like 2.30 in the morning or it could be noon. It doesn't doesn't matter. matter, I just don't think the sun goes down, actually. They, the slot machines feed the sun and it stays out <laughs> I don't 24 see the hours sun. a day. I, 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 <laughs> so anytime's okay to start drinking. Yeah, oh, and, 100%. And there's always booze available. And so I'm like, ah, fuck it, lunchtime, mm-hmm. you know, brunch, breakfast, whatever you want to call it. I'm like, yeah, let's do, you know, let's do it. What, you have beer in 32 ounces? Yeah, <laughs> let me do that. Sounds like a breakfast size beer. Yeah, with lunch. And then we're hanging out writing bits. So uh, yeah, we'll do the second one. I'm like hammered. Just Mm -hmm. I'm just hammered for like 72 hours straight. Yeah. Just out of my mind drunk. So now I'm in that like wake up. I was (laughs) I can't believe I'm saying this on a podcast. I I was so drunk yesterday that the Southwest uh, like manager had to talk. Give me a talking to before going on the plane. (laughs) He pulled me aside. He's like, sir, just, you know, it's part of our responsibility uh, when somebody looks clearly intoxicated to make sure that they're not going to be an issue on the flight. And I pulled off the acting job of the century. I was like, sir, I've been sucking for five hours. I had a few cocktails. Yeah, I drank a lot, but I'm in no way drunk. And in the back of my head, I'm like, man, I am drunk as fuck. Dude. <laughs> I hope they don't breathalyze me or any shit like that because it'll just explode. I'm surprised most people can ever get on flights leaving Vegas. I, everybody's trashed. Everybody's trash. And I had my bachelorette party um, <laughs> almost a year ago already. And uh, we were all we were all completely hammered leaving Vegas and coming into Vegas. Like how it's Vegas. It's Vegas. Like flights shouldn't expect anything but the worst pieces of trash getting onto it. <laughs> First of all, it's Southwest. <laughs> You're right. Like quit kidding yourself. It's the You're greyhound a of the sky. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Until Spirit came along and really wanted to show him up oh, on that yeah. in that department. Mm. Uh, so yeah, I've been I've really embraced this degenerate. I was so fucked up in Vegas. Tosh like. I don't even know how you got. Did you Instagram DM me? I messaged you on Instagram because I knew since you were in Vegas, you probably weren't going to really read a text. And I was like, eventually he'll look at Instagram and it'll be at a moment of clarity, <laughs> I'll know. I'll which know is he saw probably not true. But no. he didn't know what day it was. That's legit because I was like, hey, can you come in on Thursday? And he was like, yeah, I don't, I don't get back till tomorrow. And this was on Tuesday. I was messaging you. I was like, yes. So tomorrow's Wednesday. So can you come in on Thursday? And he's like, yeah, but I'm not going to be in until two on tomorrow. And I was like, no. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I but get to it, buddy. be fair, this I had a similar situation with you the last time we spoke when I was doing your show. I thought it was the wrong day oh, too. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so yeah. we're we're even now. Yeah, we're both we're both idiots. We're both idiots. Yeah. <laughs> Calendar idiots. Dude, I was uh, like, it was amazing. 
Do you ever have those like levels of like, <laughs> so comics, the weirdest lives in the world. Yeah. Um, so we're like hanging out in comedy clubs every night and um, like <laughs> you, you can go just the level of degenerate and it, like booze is so expensive. So like the first night we're at, I won't say the comedy club there, but it's a big comedy club and like mm -hmm. they, they have, you know, they have spots all over the place. We both work at the club, you know? Yeah. The first night, uh, after the first night, the booker sends a text message to my buddy who was working and he's like, hey, are you going to have your buddies there every night? Because I'm not sure we can afford to stock this fridge every night because we just <laughs> tore through it. So then we're like, hey, let's do the responsible thing here. We can't just be buying drinks all the time in Las Vegas. Bring a bottle. Let's get a handle. Yeah. Of And Seagram's vodka because we're drunk. Mm -hmm. So we're, huh? I, I just want to clarify, I am in my 30s. He is in his 40s. And you're drinking Seagram's vodka. Out of a water bottle. <laughs> Out of a water bottle. God, by a pool. We are classless races, us comics. Just living the fucking dream, man. <laughs> I'm like, there are kids in Lake Havasu falling off balconies that are more responsible than I am right 100%. now. You know, There are kids giving each other chlamydia in Cancun that are making better decisions than I am mm -hmm. in general. Absolutely. And, I, and I'm old enough to be their parents. Oh my God. Basically. But every time I go to Vegas, I do the same thing. And sometimes even when I go to, like, if I go out like in Beverly Hills and I have like a martini there with somebody, like I'll pack a flask too and I'll Hell just yeah. toss it in my Dude, water when know, I'm done because I'm like, I'm not going to pay 30 bucks twice for a drink. So <laughs> I, now, I, now I can say this. Now I can say this because it's been enough years and I'm sure Rita would forgive me anyway, but uh, when I first moved to West Hollywood, I specifically moved so I can be closer to the improv because, yeah. you know, that's my home club and I was, you know, paid regular there and would be working there and have my show there and whatever. Um, but I was so fucking broke. I mean, I was just so broke. I was mm -hmm. a struggling kid. So what I would do is every week I'd go to Costco. I'd get my friend who had a Costco card. I would buy the biggest, cheapest handle of whiskey. Mm -hmm. And then every night I would fill up my flask, walk to the improv from Fairfax and Sunset. Uh, go outside and smoke cigarettes and drink from my flask and then go back in and order like club soda from Eddie. Yep. I think I partook in that a few times with yeah, you. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I, think I think I think I thought I was super smooth about it, but probably <laughs> all the staff knew I did that. Yeah, you know? of course. They're like, why is your club soda always brown? Yeah, I don't know, guys. <laughs> This just turned into somebody bought me a whiskey and soda when you weren't looking you at it. You must Eddie. have splashed a little bit of Coke in there, buddy. I don't know. It's your fault. You should be bartending better. Yeah, Eddie, get your shit together. <laughs> but I, it's funny how those things like never leave you because I was, you know, when you, you come from college. Is, is it funny or is it devastatingly sad? I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, it makes for, uh, it makes for better stories. Like me and, um, a couple of years ago, me and one of my best guy friends, Eddie, uh, we, he was in Vegas and I was playing in Vegas. He, he's a, a pro poker player and. So we happened to be out there at the same time. What, what club were you working? Oh my God. Where was I? I was doing the world series. I was doing the world series competition. Oh Jesus. Yeah. And it was bad. That's such a shit show. Anyway, I wouldn't want to get into that, but it was, it was a rough one. And, uh, anywho, um, Eddie and I, you know, we both, we both at the time were like talking, we, we talked very honestly with each other about where we are in our lives. And he was like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm trying to make it as a, cause poker is basically the same as working in entertainment. Like you make a chunk of money and then you don't make money for a long time. So both of yeah. him and I were like, we're doing okay, but also we're scared. Like in two months we won't be doing okay. Totally. Yeah. So we went to CVS and got a tall boy and Brown bagged it all around the strip. And it was one of the funnest fucking times I've ever had. And it's because, you know, him and I both grew up in Wisconsin and that's the type of shit we did our whole lives. And I always had to watch my money when I was starting out in Chicago and starting out in LA. And so I feel like that money saving situation, like never leave, you have, you, you, you'll know comics that are doing really well or actors that are doing really well that are still scrimpers and savers in oh, certain yeah. areas yeah, yeah, yeah. because they're like, next year I might not get hired for anything. And it's a constant like worry that people have. I mean, that's, fuck, like, I, this is one of the reasons why I'm not a, a future role model, for sure. <laughs> but, um, no, you know, we, we'll have these high highs. And I think that's also the, the comedian, like, mentality is a very, like, addictive personality. I mean, yeah. We, I, for sure, clearly, we all abuse substances for the most part. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's also like that, that, that job, you know, the job is insane. Mm -hmm. You know, you're like, I want to be vulnerable and subject myself to somebody's opinion, stranger's opinion for 45 minutes. And the odds of me ever being successful are like next to nothing. Very low. Yeah. And so when you crush and you have one of those nights where, you know, and especially like I loved live event producing too. And, you know, we, we really made our bones doing that. Right? Yeah. 
But I, there was nothing better than like having a monster set and selling out your show and walking away with a ton of cash. Like it was the best, like nothing better. Mm -hmm. Because At it's also doing something you want to be doing too. 100%. But the letdown afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> the next day is like, fucking nothing's ever going to be that good again. Uh huh. It's basically, I have two feelings. Everything's the greatest ever and everything's all hope is lost. Those are my only two. Oh my zones. God. It's, I was just talking about that the other day. And that's such a, such a thing that we always have to work through in this, in this field. Um, Justin and I were waiting to come into the podcast studio and we were talking outside and I was like, he was like, yeah, I'm just kind of getting off of that. Like messy Vegas feeling still a little bit drunk, like moral hangover kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I went through that last week because I had gone from a week of working in New York every single day, two shows a night, you know, hanging out with only the, my favorite comics and favorite people doing everything that I love, having drinks every night, then going to JFL, which was just all the best comics in the world. So much good energy, all the comedy, all the drinking to just being back to reality where I was just like, oh, <laughs> no, totally. <laughs> And Mon and on like Montreal and New York are both city like Vegas is like I gotta get the fuck out of here. Uh, right? Yeah, like, Montreal and New York are like magic though. Yeah, it's like, it's like colorful. It's like Montreal just such a beautiful historic city, and New York's got that energy. And you get back to LA, and you're like you pass by the first fucking CVS, and you're like, God damn it, I'm yeah. in the valley right now. I know. This it's, is <laughs> it's just a hard. It's a hard. Like we hit a lot of interesting disparities, and even if you're a really upbeat person, like I'm a pretty upbeat, positive person, yeah, I yeah, think. Yeah. But even I will have days like that where I'm like, "Fuck, what now?" I I I, I feel like I wake up most mornings, <laughs> and I like have to coax myself out of bed. Like I have to talk myself back into the world every day. If that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Like every day I got to renegotiate <laughs> with, with <yourself>. myself. <laughs> like, yo man, we, we, we doing this again or do we just got to go ahead and phone it in. And I'll be honest with you. Sometimes the good, sometimes good Justin doesn't always win. And I'm like, you know, what, fuck it. I'm in bed all day today. Yeah. Cause I'm, you know, cause that's my life. I can do that. And it's not necessarily the most healthy thing, you know? Yeah. I, mean, I think there's a while where I was like really struggling um, when I was working, you know, 20 nights a week and being at the club every night, trying to get in, you know, get in and get past and whatever else, um, where I, I realized I came to the realization I hadn't been outside in the sun for like over a week. Yeah. Something like, and usually you think about it like, oh, that's not that big. You're like, I haven't be, like been outside in daylight hours for seven straight days. This is not normal. You know, that's like yeah. not what people... Well, and I think that's the thing that I've worked on really hard over the last year is like I, you know, I make sure I have I have a, a schedule with my Muay Thai gym where like I, it, you get charged if you don't go to your classes. So I set my classes at like seven or eight in the morning. So I have to get up and go outside. And then if I have a day where I'm just feeling like I need a recharge, I'll put everything on hold that I had on my to-do list for that day and just go sit somewhere in the sun. Hmm. I do that. I do that like maybe once every two weeks where I just go sit at the ocean and just like put but my shit on but hold. Tasha, you are one of the, it, you're such a dichotomy. You really are because <laughs> you're one of the hardest partiers I know. You're at, I mean, the <laughs> listeners, if you're not watching stand up from NPH, you're missing out, but she's one of the filthiest comics I mean, <laughs> just in general. I wouldn't even say like, you know, some people will qualify and be like, you're one of the filthiest girl comics. You're like just one of the filthiest comics. I know. <laughs> But then you meet her and it's like, she's like a straight Midwestern girl, like just sweet and bubbly and like athletic and energy. Then she's on stage, like d describing anal, like in depth. <laughs> I've watched you do that oh before. Oh my God. Yeah. And I have, I definitely do it uh, well. <laughs> and, and then, but then, and then on the flip side, you're like, she's like, you know, hard partying. Like I've been in like insane parties with, I mean, we were in Venice. Yep. I'm like FaceTiming the girl I'm seeing, like knocking, some people are knocking down rails in the bathroom. Yep. Like yep. we're just all over the place. Oh my Nutty. God, at my birthday. Yeah, oh my yeah, God. Yeah. Oh my God. At my birthday, that was so much fun. <laughs> I'm like taking a FaceTime call from this girl I'm seeing at like two in the morning. Me, you, Justin, somebody else. A I don't bunch remember. of comics. A we'll just comics. leave them nameless until yeah, yeah. they're on the podcast and we can won't speak bust for you themselves. Out. We won't bust you out. Uh, I'm like trying to explain to her what's going on. And she just sees this like really pretty blonde behind me in a bathroom. And I'm like, yeah, this ain't going to This is, I'm not going to be able to pull this off. I just, I just got to hang up. I'm just going to, I'm just going to get in the fight with you later, sweetheart. It's fine. Yep. It's okay. Yep. Moving on. But then on the flip side, like you'll see, like, I love you and Justin's like Instagram because they're, you guys are both just like such perfectly beautiful people <laughs> and like so athletic. And then just like Justin, Natasha's boyfriend is a photographer too. So like, He's always taking like the like bomb ass pictures and it's just like this 
tremendous life. He's you know? basically a spy. We're both spies, and that's why that's why the engagement's been tough because you know we're both uh, trying to kill each other. <laughs> <laughs> spy v spy. Exactly. Every day. But yeah, I mean, it's just it's interesting how you know. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's. You have to find a way, like if you really enjoy partying with fun people, which I do, I don't know if that's ever going to leave me. I don't know if that ever leaves people like mm. us. I mean, like even if I'm a grandma, I'm going to be like, yeah, slide me over that scotch. <laughs> See, I feel like you have a chance to make it to being a grandma. I think like, we'll just be real about it. I'm not, it's not like a thing I have to worry about. Really. Oh, stop no. it. No, come on. I mean, you'll be a grandma one day. <laughs> <laughs> I will transition and become a grandma with you. <laughs> I'm not going to live long enough to be a grandparent. That's ridiculous. I don't know. People that think they're not going to live long always do. Right? And people that think they're going to live forever don't. I I'm, feel like that. I'm going to be like the Keith Richards of comedy, just like, like haggard, 800 <laughs> years old. People are just like, how the fuck? There's things that you're awarded like, okay, this thing, this, I don't think I've ever talked about this, but um, I was in a store one day. This is what's intriguing about really old people. And I'm starting this um, series sometime soon. My girlfriend and I are going to shoot it together. Beers with old people. Oh, it's awesome. it's uh, me getting people's life stories because just like I like to do with my friends in this regard, like I want to do that with old people too. My grandma's like my favorite person and I fucking love old people. Um, I the, love that you call them old people. Too. I know. Well, I mean, it's still like, <laughs> if you're a cool old person, you're okay with being called an old person. Like, yeah, yeah, totally. Let's not try to call them elders. It sounds like worse, I think. But I, I, I thought about this series. Elders. The day that. Elders. <laughs> Elderberries. <laughs> Elderly. We're so weird. <laughs> Con convalescence. And that's the way you have to say it, too. Every time you talk about an old person, it has to be in that voice. Elders. <laughs> the elders. I'm showing respect to the elders. <laughs> These are my... This is creepy. <laughs> that's what it was growing up in church. Like, there was elders, and you had to respect your elders. What, what kind of church did you go to? An evangelical free church. Oh, Jesus. Not Christ. really even sure what that means, to be honest. If anybody wants to phone in and let me know. Um, I, I, I can't do it, man. Do yeah, it. that's what I grew up going to. But anyway, so I was in this store. This was like a year ago. I was in this uh, a Buffalo Exchange, and this old man was being wheeled really fucking old, like l definitely pushing 100. He was being wheeled around the store, and... I didn't think anything of it. And all of a sudden I felt this pinch on my ass that was really hard, like really, really hard. Like it was like a, felt like a mechanical pinch almost. And I looked back and it was this old guy and I wanted to get mad at first. Then I was like, um, what do I do? This guy is like going to die soon. And so he wheels a little bit further. The girl is like wheeling him around the store and he pinches another girl's ass and her reaction was the same as mine. And then we caught eyes and he pinches another girl's ass and her reaction was the same. And we all caught eyes. And then we started looking at each other and we kind of started laughing. And I was like, let's just let him have this one, eh? And they were like, yeah, you know, what are we going to do? And he got wheeled around the store and pinched every girl's ass and nobody did anything. And I was like, being an old person is kind of like you can do whatever you want at that point. I, I'm more <laughs> concerned about the lady who picks him up to go on like his ass pinching right? trip. Oh, my God. She was like she this was. young Latino girl. And I'm sure she was just like, yeah, just I'll anybody, take you around. She's probably anybody but her. Yeah. Like, She's like, I got to give him a break, an ass pinching break. It was such a strange thing. But here's the thing with that. Like, I, I think people, I, it's the same thing with kids, right? Mm -hmm. Kids and old people, they just get a pass. For everything. And it's like, dude, you can be a shithead and be a hundred years old. It's possible. There's not like some written rule that like you, you have became to be a good, a good person. person. Yeah. yeah. Asshole. Like you think of like, I was, uh, I was, <laughs> I was at this like brunch. Of what the hell it was. It's like some ex-girlfriend or something. And uh, I'm talking to this old fucking German guy. And I'm like starting to do the math, you know? Like, mm -hmm. he's like, I'm like, you're 95. And you got a real thick German accent, buddy. I'm like, I'm just like, so, you know. Right. You know, you're just like, it's awkward. Like, if you could see my face right now, this is the face I was making where I'm like, oh, we've been talking for a while. And I'm I like, uh, you know, just running the numbers in my head. And uh, finally I was like, uh. Were you in like the were you in the Hitler youth? And he's like, Yes, of course, everybody was. And I was like, Oh shit. <laughs> oh my God. Kind of fuck you, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Right? He's like, Oh yeah, everybody was in the Hitler youth. Yes, this is what you do. And I was like, Yeah, man, you probably should have just lied to me about that. Yeah. And also, like I, I felt like I was instantly revoking his old person pass. I was like, You're an old Nazi. I don't like I don't It's not the same. Yeah, yeah you're not an old human. <laughs> and I was like, Is there a number I'm supposed to call when you discover this information or something? <laughs> like a, yeah. like you have to report like the Mossad it. has to show up. 
I didn't know what to do. It was not. I just made this really awkward telling a story about how I was having brunch with a with an a Nazi. Actual Nazi. <laughs> Well, I can't wait for this old people thing because um, one of my friends is setting me up with uh, for the pilot episode. We're going to meet with the f- original Hollywood projectionist, like the guy who used to project movies, like at, with movies when people would dress up to go out to movies. That guy's for sure going to pinch your ass. He's going to for sure. Pinch. I can't <laughs> I want wait. You to warn you about that. Really. <laughs> okay. he's, he's also he's going to say a lot of really inappropriate shit too. I know, and I can't wait for it. I really want to like discover what all these old people have to offer. You know, because I. I didn't ever do that with my grandpa and it like made me kind of bummed when he died because I was he was like the first uh, the first black guy in Madison to ever like have a business. And it said that in a newspaper like when he died, I saved his newspaper scrape. That was like what was his business? Um, he was doing vinyl siding and exterior housework stuff in fascia. But it was like the headline was Madison Black <laughs> does this like he like a black Fucking guy Midwest. can actually do work it was believe like, it or not he was actually able to put was, on vinyl siding like a white man it yeah, was unbelievable it was unbelievable that they were able to type ahead but it was back in the day where headlines like that were just totally acceptable and um he was really proud of it still and so when he when he died i like that was one of the things i saved was his his newspaper the, the article Madison black. it's super racist it was super <laughs> racist but like that was how People, like he didn't ever think of it that way because he was like, that's just how people talked then. Yeah, yeah. And he wasn't like a, he wasn't one of those people that like victimized anything. So he was just like, well, that was how it was then. And now it's getting better a little bit. And like, I don't know, he was cool about it. I would have loved to have interviewed him though about like that time because he was around during like segregation and stuff. Dude, that's what I'm, so that's the other thing is like, I mean, I'm like, I'm a really liberal person and I'm, you know, I, I like, I see the problems we have, but I'm like, dude, if you're under like, 40 it's you're it's hard to complain you yeah know, you know what i mean i know you're like talk to like a 60 year old black person in this country you're like dude that they saw some shit like that yeah. was some shit that mm-hmm. was for real and you're like uh somebody somebody called me the wrong gender pronoun at starbucks you're like dude somebody <laughs> sprayed that guy with a water hose when he was trying to go to school it's true on like though. a regular monday that We'd, that was tough we appreciate nothing and i and i'm even guilty of it too like i you know like we were saying earlier with jobs and entertainment and stuff like i got offered <laughs> I got offered this gig the other day that I was just like, oh, why do I, why would I even want, I was being basically an asshole about it. And I was like, I should be getting better offers than that. That's and, so Hollywood of you. And it was, it was, but it was the honest way that I was thinking about it. And then like an hour later, I kind of stepped away from the situation. I was like, what the fuck is my problem? Like, I should be grateful that I'm getting anything, let alone, um, let's talk for a second about how you did, cause you and I were talking about this outside and I totally relate about not wanting to be a road comic anymore mm, and mm. how the road comic life can get a little bit daunting. Like I, I kind of pick and choose just big cities now that mm. I like to go to, but you kind of stepped away from a heavy, heavy comic life for a bit and were mainly just producing for a while. So what, how did that feel or how do you feel like you feel about it all now? Um, you know, I think, first of all, it, it was interesting. I think when I really sort of mentally made the transition that I'm like, I'm not a working comic anymore. You know, it's weird. I still have to file 1099 every year for a comedy. I still work enough in comedy that I, you know, I'm technically still a professional comic, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But I think there's like very much a mentality and it's a lifestyle. Just being a comedian isn't really a job. It's 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 a life you choose into. I mean, we we have clubhouses like fucking clubhouses we go hang out yeah. in and we just sit there all night and bullshit mm-hmm. with each other and um i remember i had started getting you know breaking into tv and, and producing tv shows and i was producing this show and i got booked on some fucking bar show in south south bay mm-hmm. which is ridiculous right yeah and i'm rushing you know ride a motorcycle and i'm like rushing on my bike splitting traffic on the pch trying not to get hit and I like rush to get there to make the show in time and I make it, and there's, of course, there's 17 people in the entire place. They've got <laughs> 10 TVs with sports on. No one's fucking listening. It's a, it's a bar show, right? I mean, yeah. It's a bar shows. Yeah. And I'm outside smoking a cigarette, and I'm talking to this kid, and I, honest, honestly, God, I can't remember his name, but he was a really bright kid, and I think he was, you know, if he wasn't an open micer at that point, he was just breaking into, like, you know, working. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's, we're talking, and he goes, so you're telling me you produce TV shows now? And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, and, and and I do the thing that com- all comics do this. Whenever we see each other, I need to get up more, you know? It's like golfers. Yes. Yeah. You've been golfing recently? Not as much as I'd like to. Comics, the same thing, right? I need to get up more. I need yeah. to get up more. You're yeah. always comps constantly. If you're not doing like eight sets a night, you know, 
seven days a week, you're like, ah, I'm not doing, I'm not doing enough. I need to, I need to get up more. Seriously. Like, and then you beat yourself up about it. Yeah. And that's mm-hmm. what I was doing. I was like, yeah, fuck. I haven't been, I've been working on the show. And I'm like, I'm just like glossing over the fact that I'm p- producing a fucking television show in Los Angeles. And he goes, yo man, like that, like, that's why you came here, right? To be successful in Hollywood and like make a living in entertainment. I was like, I, yeah. yeah, yeah, that is. Mm-hmm. Oh. And he's like, yeah. So why are you tripping if you're making it to bar shows? And I was like, why am I tripping about that? And it, it it really clicked for me that, you know, I had burnt out long before that point on being on the road. And, you know, we both had that experience, but, you know, I spent, I spent like a good five or six years just having to hustle, produce my own shows, take any date, you know, any shitty one-off gig for 500 bucks, just because, you know, you, again, you never know when your next check is coming. Yeah. And... Um, I feel like I missed out on like a lot of opportunities to build relationships here and I missed out on just like living in general because I was constantly traveling. I was just constantly in motion and it wasn't like, it's not the fun, glamorous, like a room headliners type of traveling where you like, you get a business car and like, it's like fucking the back of a Jeep or, you know, Southwest airline voucher to bum fuck nowhere. And I got to rent a car and drive, you know, it's, it's, it's a pretty rough life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean the last, the last actual road gig that I did was, I think it was like four and a half years ago. And it was through, um, Illinois, through Southern Illinois and down through the Bible belt, like Chattanooga and just outside of Nashville. And after playing in Chattanooga and Decatur, I was just like, uh, I don't want to do these road, road gigs anymore. Mm. It's like barely broke even just like with, with gas and shit. I mean, there, there's certain things about it that are fine. And, you know, I like being able to do the stage time, but I get enough stage time here in LA and when I'm in New York that I'm like able to figure out what my sets are, you know, Mm, I mean, mm. I feel like that's why a lot of people do the road gigs and and it's, it's amazing. You need to do it. Like my first four years, I did a lot of that. Totally. Totally. And you need to get your 10,000 hours in as early as you can. Cause that's what I tell young comics that are like, how do I do this? I'm like, you can't skip any steps. Once you hit 10,000 hours, like you'll understand like who you are as a comic, you know, I I feel like both you and I, so here's the thing is like, like a lot of times I think the comic producers and that, you know, that's producing live shows. I, I think we do skip a little bit of set and I think it really hurt me mm-hmm. like in a big way. So I, I moved out here and I had the reputation for producing shows in San Francisco and we good both shows had, too. My shows were really decent. And yeah. then, and then I got, the, I got into producing at the comedy store and there's just such a prestige to having your own show at the store. I mean, yeah. especially at our level at that point, right? Yeah. It's like a whole game changer. And so I got, I auditioned for um, for Letterman my first month and a half I was in LA. Oh my God. I did a Comedy Central audition, like whatever. And it actually fucked me because I wasn't ready. I was two years into That's comedy. That's I tell people. I'm like, don't be so eager until you're really fucking ready for something, 100%. for people to see yeah. you because- you know, even if it's, even if it's just being seen by the, you know, casting director that you've always wanted to be seen by for a role before you're ready. My first uh, series regular role that I went in for, which was like just a couple years ago. I mean, I, it takes a long time to get to a point where you even get called in to be seen for totally, series regular yeah. roles. I got coached for two days for it just because I was like, I don't want to fuck this up. Like I, I, I want that person to at least remember that I could do the role properly or do that, you know, execute it properly. Cause like if they don't, if they don't like you, you won't get called in for like two or three more years. Totally. Yeah, it yeah. takes, or, or four. Or ever. Or ever. I mean, do, do you know Jordan Brady? Uh, he directed the, sh- he did two, mo- two docs. He did, um, I am comic. Mm, that was really yeah. huge. Right. When we yeah, moved yeah, to yeah, LA, yeah. We were, yep. like, everyone was watching it. And then he did, I am road comic. Um, and so like, he's a great, he was, a co- you know, comic. I think he won like star search back in the day. Like, oh, shit. Su- he's oh my super God, cool star dude, search. Right? I haven't thought about that in ages. And then he like transitioned into directing. It was like kind of like similar trajectory that I had. And I forgot, I think I put him on one of my shows at the improv and we just really hit it off. I was like a big fan of his cause I really loved I'm comic. It was, it was yeah. really influential for me. Um, so he gave me my first ever callback for a commercial. And it, it was one of those things where like, I think I was like with Aqua. Was I with, ever with Aqua? I was with Affinity, which was like everybody from Aqua yeah. left or whatever. Yeah. Um, and just thought I was so ready and and never bothered to take acting lessons, never got coached. And I practiced, I practiced my lines in my head and how I was going to do it. And when I showed up, first of all, it's it was a sports commercial. Oh my Everyone's God. in a jersey but me. <laughs> I'm wearing like a button up, like an idiot, <laughs> a douchebag. Oh my God. I go in to read. Oh. 
Uh, I'm, I'm already on a callback because I'm friends with the director and he's like trying to help me. And I'm doing this stupid impression. Like I just got it in my head what it was supposed to sound like. And he's like, nah, nah, just more like a regular guy. And I'm like, uh, Cox communication. And I'm just like going bananas. Like, <laughs> just, just like you would regular say it, Justin. And I'm like, ah, Cox communication. And it's like, after like the fourth time Jordan's like, cool, man, thanks. We'll get back to you. You know? And that's the last time Jordan, yeah. Jordan never hit me up for a Damn, commercial. Damn, that but, sucks. But it was such a good learning experience. I was like, I got out and I was like, I knew, I knew the way they said, thanks a lot, that there was no way. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I didn't want to make it awkward with my friend and like, you know, somebody I looked up to to call him and be like, hey man, so what's going on? You know, if you guys, uh -huh. am I still in the run in here? You guys want to take another look? Um, I knew like right away and it, it, like acting, comedy, all those things are crafts and you like, you have to master them and put in time. And I think the annoying thing to me about the scene and about this town in general is people get off the bus, you know, the figurative bus to LA and just think they can do jobs that people have take, taken decades of their life to learn how to yes, do. Yes, exactly. I had a, I, I was such a good example and I won't obviously say who this friend is, but I had a friend who was new to LA. He's not, he's not here anymore. He didn't last for more than a year and a half. Now you got to tell but me he, who it is. Uh, is it a Chicago comic? No, it wasn't a comic. It was a, oh, okay. it was just an actor guy. Um, he was like, I was like, what do you want to do out here? And he was like, I'm going to be the next Ryan Seacrest. And I was like, okay, well, what are you doing to like execute that? And he was like, no, that's just what I'm going to do. And I was like, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, homie. <laughs> They're just like, I'm an actor. People just don't think that it takes all the work that it does. Like, you know, I mean, what we've been, I started working on stage 12 years ago with Second City Chicago and started doing on camera work 10 years ago. And, you know, and I'm still not a series regular, you know? Peoria, Illinois. My first set. <laughs> Peoria. 15 years ago. Oh, shit. So fucking old. Oh, God. Um, Peoria. We got into this, we were in Vegas, there was a bunch of us hanging out, like, um, you know, pull that kind of move where, like, the different comedy clubs around town, like, empty out and we're all hanging together. Yeah. And it's everybody was LA, guys. Um, and so we got into this conversation, though, like, about, I've had a lot of arguments, especially with my civilian friends. Mm -hmm. um, about what a stand-up comedian is. Yeah. And so I, I was, I was like, I was like playing poker with somebody or something. It was like another producer buddy. And he's like, oh yeah, yeah. A bunch of my writers are stand-up comics. I'm like, oh, they are. Oh, is that right? What are their names? Yeah. What clubs do they work at? You know? And they get, these guys just got, hey man, you're not the gatekeeper of stand-up comedy. Like you don't get to say. It. And I was like, no, like A, we put in a lot of work and there's like a, a hierarchy and there's a work you put in to, you know, being a working comic. And there's a very distinct moment when you stop being an open micer and you become a working comic. And then mm -hmm. you're an opener and then you're a feature and then you're a headliner. And it was, it was really pissing me off. And it's, it really, it bugs the shit out of me when it's like somebody who, you know, does open mics every other week walks around saying, I'm a, I, I'm a stand-up comedian. It's like, no, you're not, Ted. You're a fucking... You're an aspiring. Yeah, you, you're a hobbyist. Yeah, I mean, it's okay to be an aspiring. Like, it's okay, you know, I I don't direct yet, but I I aspire to do that, at one, add that to my slate at one point, but I wouldn't call myself a director. You that's know what, what I mean? So that's what I'm saying is like, the, the reason I have such a problem with it is because you have these people who go, I'm a stand-up comedian, and then, you know... It's the same way that people are like, I'm an actor. It's like, no, you're not. You're a waiter. Yeah. Like, it's okay. You're, you're trying to be a working actor, but you're not, it's not how you make your living yet. Yeah. And I, I think for me, it was like, I'm, I'm doing these fucking horrible gigs, dying, killing myself, spent years to get there. And I, I'm like, I'm like, no, 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 I'm, I'm a stand-up comedian. That's what I do. That's my job. That's my profession. Yeah. I'm not just saying that to pick up girls at, you know. The Hooters, in Hollywood, <laughs> exactly. Whatever, you know, whatever <laughs> random place I'm at, and so that that just I what I wonder about your opinion on that in terms of like when are people allowed to say they're a professional comedian? I mean, I I think once you start getting consistently paid to do something, you can start saying that, but like do it with grace. I mean, because I think the first time I started getting paid to do comedy, I was like, you know, I'm a I'm a stand up comic. But then now that I'm this many years into it, I'm much more specific when I tell people like what I'm up to. Mm, mm -hmm. Like I'll, I'll say which clubs I actually work with or wh that I perform with improv and levity lives or, you know, I won't say that I'm a regular at somewhere that I'm not, but I'll totally. say I do do shows there. You know, I try to be really careful because everybody knows each other. So people know if you're fucking around. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, that's the other thing. So like people will be like, oh, what clubs do you work at in LA? And I'm like, I've worked at all of them. You know, mm -hmm. I'm a regular at the improv. I send in my avails every week to the improv. I had my own show at the comedy store, but I'm not a paid regular there. Right. You know? Yeah. And, and I 
do I do the last factory once a year probably, and then you know ice house occasionally. You know, yeah. but but I, I would I it's 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 like you're saying it's like so important to distinguish that because we'll call each other out. Yeah, you don't want people to think you're delusional. Like I, that's a big thing for me is I'm like I try to just be pretty honest about where things are with people. So I used to be do the dumbest shit in the world when I I first got my comedy website when I was becoming a comedian. I print, first of all I printed myself business cards. Oh like yeah, five thousand of them. Yep. And yeah. they're, I, I think they're all somewhere in some box someplace in my house. They're not really, They're like, not real. <laughs> I've never handed out a fucking business card. I've never asked somebody for a business card. This is in 1986. I'm not, I'm, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like fucking send me your to contact, right? Um, but I used to, I had this website and it was absolute, just one page, like little trashy go daddy thing that was, it. and I used to, every time I would do a new room. I would add it to the list of places I performed. Yep. Like as a credit. Totally. You know? Totally. And it, it was totally. like, it would be like the rocket room in San Francisco, just a bar. I would just be oh listing bars. Oh my bar. God. The brainwash in San Francisco, straight open mic. And I'd be yeah. like, I'd be like, yeah, man. When they look on there and see all those credits, they're going to know I'm a real comedian. Yeah. No, I do it. I've been a lot. I've been at 20 shows. Or you say you open for somebody who is just on a lineup with you. Remember those things where you're like, I, yeah. I open for just because you went on stage before a person doesn't mean you open for them. And that's a mistake. A lot of young comics make is like they, I opened for, it's different to say you shared a stage with the likes of something, yeah, which yeah. is also still kind also of stretching so cheesy, it, you know, you know, it's a, uh, because I remember doing that too when I was like brand new, it, you know, as part of my credits. Oh, I've opened for this person, this person. Um, I didn't. I wasn't hired to open for that person. <laughs> no I just happened to go first yeah. on a lineup that they were later on, which is so shitty. But I can admit it now because I'm like, well, fuck it. Like nobody, you know, it's okay if you admit it later. <laughs> the, the other thing is like, so there's a, for, like Dave Chappelle, when he was coming back, when he got back from Africa or like whatever, like his like spirit quest and when yeah. he, he bounced out, yeah. he, he started hanging out, out in San Francisco a lot. And he actually, one night he went to this club, there was this great club. My buddy, Chris Riggins used to run, it's called the new parish. And it was just dope comedy, open mic every Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And one day Dave comes in and decides he's going to host an open mic for the night. That's fucking awesome. So Dave Chappelle hosts an open night. Every fucking comedian in my generation for like a year and a half, two years, would be like, I've opened for Dave Chappelle. You're <laughs> like, like, no, you need Now you fucking have it. <laughs> Dave Chappelle got high and decided he wanted to host an open mic. <laughs> Dave Chappelle doesn't know your name. He read it off a piece of paper. Yep. Living the glory days. But I, I think that as you get older, you start to realize it's like when, you know, when I walked in here and bumped into Ian, like me and Ian, I featured for Ian, you know, on, on two shows sometime in San Francisco at one point, you know, like that's legitimately we, we, we work together and we couldn't remember the situation because you just work with everybody. There's yeah. nobody you don't end up working with. And if you start telling people who you work with, that means you haven't been working that long. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And Ty and I, we go like he was really cool to me when I first started stand up. Like Ty used to hang around when we were at the comedy store a lot. Remember back that, in the day? I mean, that's the thing. So like. I, I finally clicked after he left, like, oh, Ty Barnett, we've been friends on Facebook for probably mm -hmm. a decade. Uh, he's one of the rare guys where I think I probably did a show with him with you. Yeah. But I mean, that's, I mean, Tosh, how many shows have you done in your career? Like, oh, God. I try to even hundreds think hundreds. of how many I've even done in the past, like, month at this point. And I'm like, fuck, I can't even. Um, Ty was one of, Ty is one of my favorite move to Hollywood stories because I, I hadn't even moved to LA yet. And one of my girlfriends that lived in San Francisco was in LA visiting me and was like roadieing with me to my shows. I've had roadies for like eight years, guys. It's no big deal. <laughs> so dope. <laughs> Taja is so LA. <laughs> you should have seen her. Oh, she, like, she was never a Midwest girl. It didn't make any sense. Yeah, just I was a California flashy. girl yeah. through and through. Just Jaguars and shit. Broken and I, down. <laughs> <laughs> fucking scooters. I remember like when you, you were like, I'm moving to LA. We should, you know, I, I have you, I had you saved in my phone for like six years as Natasha, LA, Chicago, yeah, LA slash Chicago. Mm -hmm. And then finally I just made it MPH. Yeah. I, I think I'm in most people's photos, MPH or like, and then people are like, oh, Neil Patrick Harris is in here. <laughs> yeah. I know. I, I've worked, I've yeah, shared I'm a, a stage deal. with Neil Patrick Harris. <laughs> I share initials with Neil Patrick Harris. So I don't know. He's my credit. I opened for MPH. <laughs> At the Denver Comedy Works one time. He oh was my using God. a bathroom before I was. Oh. No, I, I'm joking. I oh, I was like, fuck, yeah. I, that, I, that counts as a credit. That's a credit <laughs> on my website. <laughs> I saw his penis. He peed next to me. Um, 
but when I first moved to LA, my girlfriend was here staying with me and, uh, Ty Barnett, I had never met him before and I was doing a spot at the parlor. So Chris D'Elia was on that show. This was show. like Jay show back in the day? Yeah, this was okay. Jay show back in the day. It still, still goes on here and there, I think, but, um. Oh my, I remember this. You were so excited about that. Yeah. Yeah. It was my first time performing on the parlor and I was pumped. And Chris D'Elia was on that night. Amy Schumer was on that night. Like it's the kind of show where a lot of really great comics pop in. And Ty was on the show. And Ty, after the show, was like, hey, you and your girlfriend want to come and like, you know, uh, smoke in my car? And we were like, I don't know. You know, it sounds sounds like a nice offer. But you're always skeptical of people, right, right? And what their intentions are. So he, he's like, I'll be out front in my Escalade. And we were like, okay. <laughs> and so he was in his Escalade out front waiting for us. And we went and sat in there and like, you know, we, we smoked a little bit. And then he was like, okay, cool. That was fun. Um, I'm going to go home now. You guys want to hike tomorrow? I want to show you guys the Hollywood sign. And we, I was literally like, what the fuck? There's this guy that is a comic who owns an Escalade and he's not trying to hit on. He wasn't trying to hit on us at all. He was just literally like, you guys want to like come chill? looking for hiking buddies. Yeah. And so the next day, bright and early, he picks us up from my friend's house that we were staying at and takes us hiking. That's Actually adorable. just takes us hiking. That's the most and then we go to lunch. About comics. Yes. And we go to lunch and then he takes us home. And I was like, Ty is going to be my friend forever. And we used to hang out all the time because he was, he was like the most non non pretentious like nicest guy ever he That's never so cool. creeped on anybody ever that, which it's sad that you expect that but you just kind of do <laughs> sometimes I, I was watching i was on I don't know, it was facebook or some shit i think it's cool that this is happening but like g- girls are starting to like bust dudes out who slide in and be super like disrespectful and weird yes and I, i'm like ah, how much is this really happening and then i see like Girls I'm dating's DMs and they're just brimming with uh, fucking uh-huh. just like random dudes. I'm like, I think it's kind of weird to DM a girl off of Tinder from her Instagram. I'm like, maybe, you know, she's like, hit me up on Tinder on Instagram. I'm like, ah, you know, I don't really know you like that. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if I'm chosen, if I'm selected. Right. Even when I match, <laughs> I'm like, ah, I don't know. It's kind of weird. But I, whatever. I'll do I'll message people or whatever. And but I, I like I was reading like this this comic had like Another comic and booker had like hit her up and asked asked her if she wanted to be introduced for like some like bondage thing or some shit like what yeah I don't know, like and she, he he was like oh this person's really rich and whatever and like he was coming at it like he was doing her a solid you know like she needed a, some help and some cash or something I don't I don't know I don't know what's in your head where you're like hey I don't know you even yeah. if you did know you. And you're like, do you do you want me to introduce you to somebody that's like uh, into weird sex shit? Yeah, because they got a lot of money. That's so weird. And then I want to jump on and be like, yo, is he is he down with you know thirty something year old dudes? Because I'm in. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I need I need some cash. But I like I, I I was just I'm like I'm consistently stunned at just like how shitty people are. Yeah, it's like that's why I think I try to focus on like the good stories because. You know, there are plenty of shitheads, but like I had this discussion when I was, I forgot where I was, but I was having dinner with a bunch of Midwesty people and um, we were all like talking about, we were all sharing like good stories about LA and I was like, this is kind of refreshing because most people just sit and talk shit about it all the time. And this, this city is pretty phenomenally weird, but um, there's a lot of cool people here too. And when you've been here long enough, you kind of find those people. You definitely find your pockets. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think like you and Bronston, I mean, I know so many oh, comics in this Bronson. town. I mean, Bron is, so me and Bron have just been friends forever. But in terms of like socially, especially once I wasn't getting up as often as I once was, and once I wasn't spending like every night in the club. At the clubs, yeah. Um, I, It's crazy, like socially how like few comics I hang out with anymore. Yeah. But it's weird. Every time I go to the improv, it's like a fucking, you know, high school reunion for me. I'm like, oh shit, yeah. you're still here? And like, yeah, I haven't left. You're the one who's been gone. Like, <laughs> Eddie will talk shit. I'll be like, who the hell is that guy, Eddie? And he's like, dude, you're the one who hasn't been here for three years. Like, right. you're the one who needs to figure this shit out. But um, I think like you and you and Bronson and a handful of my other friends who also left LA, I, I kind of had to go make new friends mm-hmm. once I stopped doing comedy all the time. Yeah. Like, I don't have any social skills. I'm like, <laughs> There's a, there's a place where I'm allowed to get drunk. 
and they'll make sure I don't drink and drive or something. And that's, that's it. Yeah. This is where I live. And that's what I realized too, is like, I have some sober friends in comedy and I don't, I haven't seen one of them, one of them I haven't seen in like fucking like three months because he's sober. I only see people that <laughs> drink for the most degenerate. part. It's so bad. Well, what do you have coming up that you're most excited about? I mean, are you working on any fun projects? You were fucking. with awesomeness for a while and yeah, you're yeah, kind yeah. of doing your own stuff. Yeah. Um, I got some cool stuff. I'm, I'm actually, what, what do I got that's the most interesting? Um, I just wrote a new web series. Hopefully we'll produce that pretty soon. Awesome. It's kind of a, it's like Sex in the City meets um, like LA story almost. So okay. it's about like an Eastern European girl that moves to LA and wants to be an artist basically. And it's just, she's weird and awkward and kind of a an asshole. So kind of like, um, what's the Zoe Deschanel show? Kind of a little bit of that too, like New Girl. Maybe, meets. yeah, maybe. I haven't seen it, yeah. Um, and then, so that, like, look out for that. Like, hopefully that'll go to, like, YouTube Red or something. And then, um, yeah, man, just working. Just yep. doing thing. Probably be up in San Francisco uh, the end of this month. Oh, cool. You know, probably. Who we knows? We gotta work together again. We need to, like, create a tour or something. Yeah, I need a job. I think it's where this <laughs> Hey, what do you have to plug, Justin? Uh, I don't know. My book is getting pulled off of the market uh, this week. <laughs> That's four years old. My last TV appearance was fucking two, two years ago. I don't know. Nothing. If you have you're a show. You've if got somebody's a show got a job, out. please hire me. That's what Dude, I do. Mean. Dude, I know. Isn't that the game, man? I, I always say that too. I'm like, people ask me what my credits are before I go on stage. And I'm like, let's just let the people decide if they I'm like me. Because I'm like, yeah, nobody yeah. fucking cares about my credits. There's so many people doing bigger things. Would you also like you just, just setting yourself up for failure? I know. <laughs> I don't want to get your expectations too high, you guys. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm like you can rattle off the networks I've been on. Yeah. Nobody gives a shit. Yeah. Like they'll either know me or they don't. <laughs> and I was like, I, it's funny too. Cause like I get, I don't know if this happens to you, but I get hit up by just crazy different people that I wouldn't expect to be like fans mm -hmm. and for shit I'm like what like I got um I got hit up I, I played a director on a show I was directing uh-huh it was like faux reality so I was directing a fake show within a show that I was also directing on super Actually, meta, right? yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then on, on the show it comes up and it's like Justin Harrison director and then like my Instagram handle uh -huh. which is also weird I don't know why the producers that decided that but whatever you know? yeah um so I get hit up by these like YouTube, you know, influencer kids and they're like, we saw you on this show. I was like, I didn't even know that it aired. Like, that's crazy. And then like the next day I'll get like an email. I get an email from some, some kid in Oklahoma, super sweet kid. He's like, Hey, I bought your book, you know, six months ago. I've been really afraid to message you, but I just want to say thank you. It was really helpful for me. And like, now we're Insta uh, Facebook buddies and yeah. like, like each other's posts and shit. But I'm like, it's just so weird. And none of the things that I think I should be known for, I'm like, dude, I did a set on this sh channel. Yeah. Nobody knows about that. I know. No one's ever hit me up. Same shit. It's kind of interesting. Like I have a couple, I have a couple people that hit me up every week after listening to my podcast. And one of these guys, Eric, um, shout out to Eric, you know who you are. Um, he listens every week and sends me the best quotes from everybody during every episode. That's great. Eric, and Eric I'm excited. I told him, I was like, so when I start le re releasing merch, I'm basically just going to use all the quotes that he said because they're the best ones. Like, yeah. I don't, because I don't really go back listening for those things. Like, I'll go back and listen to my stuff just to make sure I don't sound like an asshole. But <laughs> I, did but this, I did this one podcast. They, these guys really threw me for a loop. It's like, awesome. You know, like my last job was like, I was, you know, making shit for kids, like teenagers, you yeah. know? So, and it's like right smack dab in the me too, you know, movement is blowing up and like mm -hmm. just everything's like really sensitive. And so, you know, as a comic, you're like fucking whatever. I'll say whatever. You know, yeah. group of comedians, you know, with, obviously with a reason. But on that, in that medium, you have to be so cautious. 100%. Yeah. Very influential to that age. So I get hit up by these podcasters and they're really nice people, really dope. But they're like, hey, we we like to introduce we like to interview comedians who've like transitioned to do interesting work, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. Um, you know, sounds fun. And they we you know, we we did the podcast and like we drank during it and we started getting drunk. And they so they wanted my opinion on me too. And I'm just like 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 I can't like I don't want to talk you know I don't want to talk about this like I yeah. you know I think it's great that there's finally change happening in the industry, um, but I don't like I don't feel like I f don't feel like as a man I have the right to chime in on that like yeah. I sh all I should be doing is supporting and getting people's back and making sure people don't do shitty stuff and then yeah. 
I, I don't get an opinion in it. It's, you know, basically what I'm trying to say to them. And they're like asking me like, they're like, oh yeah, but what about, you know, they're doing like that shock jockey. Like, yeah, what yeah. about when a girl's asking, I'm just like, like guys, I like, I can't, no. I can't go here with you. So I'm like, it's like, whatever. And I felt like, you know, my answers were appropriate and it's, how, and it represented how I felt and I didn't want to get misconstrued or get pulled into any of their stuff. Um, and then the next, next day they post it and they tagged my work. They tagged NBC Universal oh, no. and they tagged Awesomeness and it's like 88 minutes of like a podcast, a comedy podcast where like I'm cussing and talking shit and we're talking about dicks and, you know, going off. Oh, what? Oh, I spent, I'm on set. I ran off of set I, into a trailer. I'm like listening with my headphones. People are I'm like, not now. Don't talk to me. And I'm like, did I say, I'm like rewinding back. I'm like, uh, it's so scary because you can't, uh, you can't erase. Like I, I mess up talking all the time, but that's how conversations go. I mean, but when it's on a podcast, it's just there for life. And yeah, yeah. so you can't like undo it. And like, I'm a, I'm a scumbag and I really got to keep that public. <laughs> I really got to hold that inside, you know? Yeah, no, I mean, but good for you because it's, it's tough when you get on certain, like I've, I've also been on podcasts in the past where the, the person ended up getting in trouble for something. And then they like, people try to pull you into it and you're like, Ooh, I had nothing to do. Me, I'll who. tell you when we're not on, okay. the, on, the, it, on the, on the radio. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, it sucks when you get like looped into something that you had nothing to do with, you know, and, and people should know better than not tag your work in stuff. Cause it's your own personal brand. That's fine. 100%. Like you speaking as yourself is fine, but you speaking as a company is not the same. Totally. And I'm not representing them on that. One thing that drives me crazy too, is like, that people like lumping others into shit is like I got attacked like straight up like personally attacked this lady's calling me like a piece of shit and like I'm a complete scumbag years ago like a comedian friend of mine had had like a an exchange I didn't get into it I didn't read the articles about it with a, a woman like mm -hmm. I think it was she was a social media star or some shit I don't really know the story I didn't read about it all of a sudden one day everybody's like this guy's a piece of shit this guy's a piece of shit and I'm like well, look, I don't know what he did or didn't do, but I, when people ask me, do you know him? I'm like, I know him as a nice guy. Like I, he's done a lot for me. He, he helped me out and like, he helped me like, you know, land a book deal. And like, he was, he's a good guy to me. No way excusing what he did or like, and I, I don't want to dig into the personal stuff. Like if whatever's going to be there is going to be there. My experience with him is going to be my experience and whatever. Like it, it's just not, again, it's like not my place to have an opinion. And so like, on one of his statuses, like, he was just getting fucking ber berated. And I was like, yo, you know, like, this guy's an okay guy. And, like, at least from my opinion, like, he's okay by me. That's mm -hmm. it. Just my inbox is just slammed. Like, oh, just all these angry people. Shit. And I was like. And you're just trying to do the right thing, like, stand up for a person yeah. that you have good opinions about. Right. And that's what gets tough. And, you know, and I try to be pretty Switzerland when it comes to it. Like, I have some people that are friends in comedy that like to hear gossip about each other. And I don't really get involved in that in world. Yeah, I don't want to be in it. I stay out of it because um, I like who I like. And I like them because my personal rapport with them has been really nice. And other than that, I don't really care. Like, Yeah, and, and this just, is... This is Hollywood, so unless, I will throw you under the bus if I have to. Unless you know I, mean? I find out from, like, five friends that they're really terrible, and then I can make a judgment that they might not be as good as I thought. But, like, for the most part, I am just going to – like I'm just – it's same with movies. Like, I, if I, somebody has a really bad opinion on a movie, I still want to watch it, when see is your what I think about when, it when myself. When is your controversy going to come out? Yeah, right. What, what's your controversy going to be? Even? Probably a nipple slip of some kind. <laughs> it's not going to be controversial. It's 2018. <laughs> I don't, I don't think I've had anything that bad. Um, so like you're you're going to have a controversy. Somebody at some point it's gonna I'm be sure something. in the future. What is it going to be? Mm, let's, let's try to predict let's your guess controversy. The future. What do you think it would be? I feel like it's going to be something like so – it's got to be something so out of character. It's to be like Natasha was using child labor to make her T-shirts. <laughs> Or some shit like that. My cheese keenies that yeah, I plan to make yeah, a line exactly. of one day. It's going to be It's going to be there's little Thai children little just building oh, little hands no. with cheese. And it's like, it's not even like you accidentally contracted them. You're straight up <laughs> hanging out, watching it. Like you, you I'm, love I'm, watching children work, you know? No. You're there personally. Well, you know what? I started I started um, stripping tobacco when I was nine. I always have to make sure I say stripping tobacco really fast. Super because quick. if I take yeah, a yeah. pause in there, that could be chunked out and somebody could play that over one day and be like Natasha started tripping when she was nine that wouldn't be controversial <laughs> but for sure I think you're gonna have child labor okay I think that's how you go out perfect well yeah. I'd like to go out that way <laughs> that's a good one that means you're, ma you're making stuff that's a big step Justin where can everybody find you on social media uh 
Justin is funny. Yeah, I mean, type in Justin Harrison comedian, all my bullshit comes up. Justin Follow underscore me. is I mean, underscore funny on Instagram, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to be tagging him in all these posts and stuff. He's fantastic. I can't wait to see uh, your show when it comes out and all the other fabulousness that you're going to do. And I'm NPH Comedy on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that jazz. You can follow the podcast at Future Role Model on Instagram or Role Model Pod on Twitter. You can follow the studio at Comedy Pop Up 